What is up guys, 70 Savage here. We are starting a brand new project today and it is the kitchen galley unit. If you are new to the channel, we have been converting this sprinter van right here into the zombie apocalypse survival van. I'm doing this conversion 100% DIY and documenting the entire process along the way. Every single thing that we put in the van, I make a video about it and put it on the channel. So in part one of this galley tutorial, we are going to cover three things the drawers, installing the fridge, and installing the undermount sink. The project that we are gonna do encapsulates this cabinet right here. Now we built the structure of this cabinet in the 8020 video. It's crazy, crazy strong. I can shake the whole van by just shaking this thing. And we are essentially going to fill it with stuff. We have this fridge, obviously. I'll cover that in a little bit more details in a second. Up here, we're gonna put a drawer that'll house my silverware, or in my case, plasticware, because it's almost as if I never left college. Next up, we have the sink. I thought I'd go with this low mounting here. You're just gonna have to dip your hands in a little bit here every time you wanna wash them. Bad joke. First thing that we mounted was the fridge. This is an Isotherm Freeline 115 fridge. The reason I bought it is because it's pretty good amount of storage, but importantly, it has a large freezer section. But the way my life goes, that's pretty much the drink section, and this is pretty much the food section. It is a DC 12 volt fridge, so it's gonna hook straight to our 12 volt battery system. Got a nice little touch screen thingy to set the temp. And it actually took a little bit of work to mount this thing. The way that you're supposed to do it with this particular model as you pull off these caps right here. In that hole, you're not gonna be able to see it because it's too dark. There's basically a bolt that I've put through here. It's a really small bolt. It goes through those mounting points, completely through the sidewall of the fridge, and then the bolt comes out here, which I just attached with another piece of extrusion. It's not that deep, and it's really not that wide. They made it a very good shape for fitting in one side of a van build. So it's really hard for me to actually like provide a recommendation for this fridge yet since I haven't quite turned it on. So it's been about a day since the last clip you just saw. And in my sleep last night, something actually came to me about this galley unit. You ever dream about the uh, galley unit in your van? No? Oh. If I try and reach back to the imaginary faucet, my arm is colliding with this structure right here. I think that this is kind of an awkward place for the sink, and I'm gonna swap these two. Just like that, guys, we got the sink on this side and the fridge on this side. On my last galley unit, if I wanted to switch the side that the sink was on, I was remaking that entire thing. That would have taken a week. I love 80-20. So doing a little bit of a sink comparison this morning. These right here are the three sinks that we have to pick from. On the left here, we have a stainless steel sink that is covered with white enamel. The middle one here, we have a granite composite sink. This is kind of like an engineered stone. And then on the right here, this is the original sink that I got. This is a fire clay sink, which is a special type of clay that comes from Italy. This is what a lot of people are using in their homes these days. The stainless steel sink, pretty noisy. The granite composite, very quiet. And then the fire clay, about as quiet as the granite composite. So the stainless steel sink weighs 9.3 pounds. The granite composite sink, 16.9 pounds. And then I'm gonna need two hands for this one. Give me a sec. The fire clay sink weighs 48 pounds. This thing is an absolute monster. So if I was putting it into a house, I would hands down pick this fire clay sink, but it's a bit too heavy for our van. It would be pretty much irresponsible to put something that heavy in our galley unit. The stainless sink with enamel on it, is a very good option. It's also much cheaper than the other options, but I don't think that this is a very long lasting type material relative to some of the other stuff that you can get. Considering all of the different variables, I'm gonna go with the granite composite. This also happens to be the most expensive one. Considering it's pretty lightweight at under 20 pounds and it's this highly durable engineered material, I think it's the best overall solution. All right, so the next uh, subtask for this kitchen galley project is figuring out how to mount this sink to the 8020 cabinetry. Couple challenges with this. This sink has a lip 
that basically needs to be supported from the bottom up. The sink needs to be held up in place. And also the sink needs to be held in this direction and in this direction so that it doesn't slide. So the plan that I have is to actually create something similar to this. So this is the template for the countertop and this sink is gonna be an undermount sink. But if I make a cutout similar to the cutout that we made on the template, just a little bit bigger so that it actually sits the sink flush, we can mount that cradle that we've made out of wood to the bottom of these extrusions pretty easily. So let's go ahead and cut some more wood. First test fit, we are almost there. Just a smidgen bigger. Second test fit, we are so close. Third time is a charm. This is what it looks like without the sink inside of it. Literally just a piece of wood with a sink cut out. We basically need to mount this thing so that it is very firmly pushed upwards so that I can hold the weight of that sink. Full day's work here, and we have finally completed my newest invention, the sink satchel. So to start off, this is kind of what it's gonna look like when it's installed. Obviously, this is still the template, but we got ourselves a hanging sink. So let's take the countertop off. Now we have the sink sitting in the wooden ring that I showed you guys. The top of the sink basically sits flush with the bottom of the countertop. And then the magic is actually all of this snazzy stuff in here. First things first, we have the front mount. This is literally just an 80-20 extrusion that was slid down one inch since we have half of an inch of plywood and half of an inch of sink. That was really easy to do since we had this vertical extrusion here. Coming to the sides, I made this little miniature structure on both sides. It's exactly the same. It's basically an inch and a half of vertical mounting places. Since this piece of aluminum sits below this part of the extrusion, I had to actually create an inch and a half of mountable space here. It's only eighth inch thick, but I think it's plenty strong for this application. And then on this side here, it is exactly the same. That flat mounting point is basically what everything sits on top of. That entire clip, you were probably wondering what this orange ratchet strap was for. I'm not gonna use this, uh, just ignore it. Something that I absolutely love about this mechanism we just engineered here is that it is completely adjustable. It can go up, down, front, back, side to side. I have a ton of adjustability, way more than I could possibly need, so that I can align the sink with the cutout in the countertop, and it will be just exactly perfect to the dimensions that I want it to be. So that wraps it up for the sink satchel. Let's move on to the next step. The next project we are going to do is four drawers that are going to be housed within the galley unit here. The first one is going to be the drawer for the trash can and only for the trash can. So the goal is to make that one as short as possible. It is going to slide out this way. Behind that, and the reason why we wanna make it as short as possible is we're gonna put two drawers underneath the sink that actually slide out into this area right here. The fourth drawer on the galley unit is gonna be right above the fridge here. So as far as how we are actually going to construct these drawers, they're pretty simple and they are gonna be ridiculously good. I learned a lot in my last van about how to make stuff out of wood. For the drawer boxes, what we're gonna use is this maple plywood. It is pre-finished on both sides. And my favorite part about it, it is lightweight. So the entire sheet of half inch maple plywood only weighs 44 pounds. A standard half inch sheet of plywood actually weighs closer to 60 pounds. So we're saving a good amount of weight by using this maple. What we're gonna do is basically use these Blum or Bloom, I don't really know how you pronounce it, drawer slides. These are considered to be like the highest end drawer slides that you can buy. They are undermount drawer slides, so the drawer actually kind of sits on top of them and actually makes the entire slide hidden. They look really, really nice when they're fully installed, but they're a little bit more challenging to do because you got to take specific measurements. And then for the drawer boxes, we are going to glue them and screw them together with Craig pocket hole screws and then wood glue. I will put links in the video description, except for the plywood, you gotta find that locally. So let's get started with making the first drawer. The way that you calculate the actual dimensions of your drawer box are the most complicated part about Bloom drawers. So after we ran the dimensions of our opening here versus the little instruction sheet that Bloom offers, we came out with 16.969 inches in drawer width. I'm just gonna round that up to 17 and then 12 inch in length. I'm gonna make my drawer four inches tall. So in our case, it came out pretty easy, but definitely look at their sheet if you're making drawer boxes. First thing you wanna do when you get a brand new sheet of plywood, make it square on the edge you're gonna start cutting from. So the only big tool that I'm really using for cutting all of these cabinets is this DeWalt 
track saw. This thing allows you to cut ridiculously straight lines with just amazing consistency. These things are pretty expensive, but I didn't have one of these in my first build and I have one here and it is night and day. Link to this bad boy in the description below. So we have cut the pieces out for the drawer box here. They're not attached by any means. Now I got to cut out the drawer bottom. What I'm going to do is actually dado in a small groove for the bottom of the drawer to sit in. It's going to greatly increase the strength of the drawer. So this is half inch plywood. I'm gonna dado in a quarter inch. So what we are going to use to cut our slot or dado into the side of this piece of wood is a router. And when I was watching van videos and I was first getting into it, I remember this tool confusing the crap out of me. So I'm gonna explain what a router is briefly. <laughs> Basically, it is literally just a motor with a spinning bit on the side. It's like a really fast drill. Now, the router itself is very simple, but you always attach things to it that make it seem very complex. What this whole thing here allows you to do, this is two different parts. This is a plunge base for the router, which lets you take the router and plunge it into the piece so that you can do your work and then take it out. Then this black thing here, which attaches to the plunge router base is actually an edge guard. So what I'm gonna do is set this edge guard to be the distance that I need from the back of the wood to the groove that I'm drilling. And then I'm just gonna drag it along. All right, guys, look at that. We have ourselves a fantastically cut, perfectly straight groove. Now that we've got the dados cut on all sides, just like this, we simply place them on the slightly oversized cut of quarter inch plywood, and we have ourselves a drawer box. In its current state, this drawer box would completely fall apart if I poked it. So now we got to figure out how to actually connect it all together with some strength. So if we imagine this is our drawer box and it slides out this way, there will be no screws showing on the inside surfaces or on the side surfaces that you're actually seeing when you use the drawer. And they're all gonna be hidden on a side of the drawer that you can't see. Alrighty guys, we have ourselves our first completed drawer box here. It's actually not fully complete because we still have to do a couple of finishing touches, but we have it put together and ready to test out on the drawer slide. Basically, it's gonna slide in and out this way. These locking devices allow you to pull the drawer in and out. You can lift the drawer off after the slides are permanently mounted wherever they're supposed to be. You use this jig from Rockler, you line it up, you drill pilot holes. You wanna put them on like this, the handle you pull to the sides of the drawer. We got our first sliding action. Soft close, baby. It's good to know that the basics of the drawer box actually work as intended. We have these edges facing up here that are gonna be exposed when we use the drawer. And I don't wanna see these plywood edges. I would much rather see a matching finish to the sides of the drawers. And that's where this edge banding comes in. Now this is pre-finished maple edge banding. So it's the same wood, same finish on it. I got this stuff on Amazon, it's actually pretty cheap. But we're basically going to cut strips of this, lay it on top of here, and then use our little tiny iron to iron it on. I'm going to edge band the other side of this scrap piece. I got myself a regular old iron. This is just like a $30 iron. So that took about a tenth the amount of time using the standard iron as opposed to that little miniature version. Let's go ahead and do a little strength test here. I have a very slight amount of overhang on this one. <laughs> so it's pretty strong. We finished edge banding the tops of all four of these pieces here and they came out looking great. What we need to do is glue all the faces together and screw them together for one final time. This is gonna prevent the squeaking 
noises from happening while you're driving down the road. That being said, the drawer face, which we'll do after this, are not gonna be glued to the drawer because you wanna be able to pull those off and resurface them if needed. Real quick, before we glue these together, you have to sand off any pre-finished surfaces. Wood glue doesn't stick to anything besides wood. This is by far the best drawer box I've ever made. This is what it looks like underneath. We gotta make that extra space to conceal the bloom drawer slides. We have this drawer 100% complete. We attached some stabilizing beams and we made the front face. You use this as a puppy drawer. It took me about two full days to make this drawer right here. Good news, if we keep going at that rate, we'll be done in about three years. So now that this drawer is done, I need to work on the next two, which are gonna slide in and out right here. They're gonna be little skinny drawers. The way that I actually construct these small sliding doors is exactly the same as the way that I built the first drawer. So I'm gonna chug through these, and then I'm gonna give you guys an overview at the end of all the little differences and other things that I learned. We have finished all of the drawers in the galley unit. The first one that we went over in depth, we got two that slide out and then one little skinny drawer that's gonna come out from above the fridge. As far as how I built these, it was identical to how I showed you guys how I built the first one. One tip, don't glue your cabinet faces on. Screw them in and don't glue them. You wanna do that because if you gotta refinish these or anything, you wanna be able to remove them. Another tip for skinny drawers, you're not gonna be able to fit the full size locking mechanisms, but thankfully they make miniature versions that are much skinnier. The build quality of these things is next level. Super, super happy with how they turned out. Also, I'm not sure if the sun worked. It doesn't look like I'm uh, any tanner. So it's kind of funny. This drawer took me two days. And in this one day today, day's not even over, I've made all three of these. I consider that some pretty solid exponential growth on drawer output. Something else that I absolutely love about these drawers, they are ridiculously lightweight. This drawer right here probably weighs like three pounds, two or three pounds. The maple makes a really, really big difference as opposed to something like Baltic birch, which is much more dense. You can adjust them with all of these little dials that come built into the drawer slot. I'll show you guys an example of just how powerful these adjustment mechanisms are. Look at how off this drawer is. Just like that, everything is good to go. We did not have to do any cutting of wood. We didn't have to rebuild these drawers. We just used the adjustment. So we've removed the drawers. And as far as actually attaching the drawer slides to the 8020, there's about a million different ways that you can do this. I tried to use the extrusions as much as possible. So I literally just drilled out some of these holes to fit a 5 16th bolt and they're into the extrusion. In areas where I didn't have an extrusion, I just got these steel L brackets from my local hardware store and then did the same thing where I drilled a little bit of a bigger hole in the drawer slide bolted them together, bolted them to the extrusion. And then the garbage drawer is the absolute simplest. It's literally just bolted in two places to 8020 extrusion. And this is what it looks like from afar. A little bit more complex than what it looked like in the beginning of the video, but we've used every single possible inch in this thing for storage. And a little bonus guys, we added this kitchen front storage drawer thingy. I think it looks pretty good. So super stoked with the progress thus far on the galley unit. It is coming together really nicely. In the next video, we are gonna complete the entire galley unit that is going to cover three main things installing the countertop paneling on the outside of the galley and the latches that we are going to use on all of the drawers and cabinet doors so if you like this first part and you want to see how it turns out slap that subscribe button below i hope that you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys next time